All right. So the first one we got is Wildcat. Uh, yeah. Okay. DC Comics is the publisher. First appearance was in Sensation Comics number one in January of 1942. Damn. So he's a really old uh, character. Dang. It's like a little couple years after Superman and yeah. Batman. Yeah. Jesus. He was created by Bill Finger, same guy that created Batman. Really? Yeah. And artist Erwin H- uh, Hasten. Uh, alter ego is Theodore Ted Grant. Okay. Uh, he is a metahuman. Uh, a team affiliations are the Justice Society of America, Suicide Squad, All Star Squadron, and Justice League. He's got powers? Somewhat. Uh, he does have abilities. Uh, we'll get to those in a little while, though. Uh, basically, uh, Theodore Ted Grant is a normal human who was given magical, uh, ma- uh, he was magically given nine lives. Okay. So, like a cat. He remains at the peak of human condition due to his extensive workouts. He is a world-class boxer who is trained by, uh, who has trained Batman, Black Canary, and even Superman in the art. Bat- Bats are making box? I don't know if I've seen him throwing three fucking jabs and a fucking right hook. Just pop, pop, pop. Yeah. <laughs> you don't see him do that? And Dark Side, like, what the fuck? <laughs> he does that to that criminal that he knocks his jaw off. <laughs> just the fat guy sitting there. He I just thought, like, I don't see Bat- a Superman, like, fucking bobbing and fucking weaving. <laughs> and then he fucking like, Mike Tyson, like, oh, shit. Imagine if he started fighting like that. Like, imagine, like, ah, damn, like, yeah, like, if he put his all, all his, like, weight behind a real punch. An actual punch? Good, sh- Jesus. <laughs> Does a fucking damn you roll and then fucking cracks you across the dome. And, I mean, Black Canary could probably use it because all she's got is that voice. <laughs> <laughs> she needed something else. She's going to fight like a boxer. Uh, he was trained uh, fighting, uh, let's see, he was trained to fight. And to become in fighting condition by ex-boxer uh, Joe Morgan, the same man who trained Grant's fellow mystery men, the Adam and the Guardian. So oh, the Adam, the Adam was like that five foot two guy. Yeah, he was like he went from ninety eight pounds a weakling to one hundred and fourteen pounds of flyweight muscle. Apparently, yeah. Uh, Ted Grant first donned the Wildcat uh, costume in Sensation Comics, nineteen forty two, the same issue in which Mister Terrific premiered. Wow, so. Mister Terrific is that old too? Yeah, wasn't he black though? Yeah. Like, I don't know how well they would portray a black man in 1942. <laughs> <laughs> you went there, didn't you? I'm just I'm being honest. I don't think they would have shown him very well. <laughs> Wildcat's origin is chronicled in Sensation Number 1, as well as Secret Origins Number 3 from 1973, and Arcelor Squadron Annual Number 1 in 1982. Henry Grant vowed on his baby son's crib that he could... <laughs> <laughs> On the way on his ba- on his son's crib, not his son. Yeah. So he's like, I, I, wait, the the word ain't like he he vowed not like he, 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 he picked up his son and threw him aside and he, he vowed to his crib. Listen, crib. Henry Grant. So this is his dad. Yeah. Basically vowed on Ted Grant's crib. So if to wait, so why the crib? I don't. I know what they're trying to say. Like, yeah. He was laying in the crib. Yeah. But that's not what you wrote. <laughs> so Henry Grant ra- avowed on his baby son's crib that his child would not grow up afraid of life. So he encouraged his son to participate in sports. Orphaned during the Great Depression, Ted Grant found himself unemployed in the big city. One night, he saved Soccer Smith, the heavyweight boxing champion, from a mugging. So what? He couldn't be a sw- he couldn't play soccer. <laughs> his name is Soccer Smith, soccer. and he decided to be a boxer instead. But soccer not spelled S O C C. Oh, soccer. Like soccer. S-O-C-K-E-R? Somebody in the R. Yeah. Oh. Soccer Smith. Clever. Yeah. It's a good name. Like it was actually Soccer Smith. Like I play soccer. <laughs> I'm a boxer, but my name S O C C E R, sir. Soccer. <laughs> <laughs> no, soccer as in S O C K E R. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Should have called him Sockin. But again, this is 1942. How many people really played soccer back then? Everybody, isn't it a fucking goddamn global now? Yeah, Jesus, I don't think it was in the 1940s. Juggernaut of his fort. <laughs> uh, soccer took Ted under his wing, and soon Ted became a heavyweight boxing champion in his own right. He also became tangled and unlo- knowingly in his manager's sinister uh, plans. Sinister, <laughs> like it all. Was like... I would love to have his. I'm love to hear his sinister plans. <laughs> like somebody's like he's a joker. I know. Uh, his mentor, Soccer Smith was killed by Grant's manager's Flint and Skinner, who used a syringe loaded with poison and a boxing glove. He had been robbed of his Green Lantern comic. The boy, describing the mystery man Green Lantern, the Green Lantern comic, uh-huh, inspired Grant to create the costume of a large black cat. He took the name Wildcat and vowed to clear his name. 
He brought Flint and Skinner to justice. The criminals were forced to confess, clearing Grant's name, and obtaining uh, judge, uh, justice for Smith. Using the identity of Wildcat, Grant continued to fight crime after that. Good for him. Uh, by issue four, Wildcat had a custom motorbike, the Cato Cycle. Oh, Jesus. And a comedy sidekick named Stretch Skinner. <laughs> <laughs> just look at your face and say, oh, God, that's fucking corny. <laughs> that's not good. Back shots me. <laughs> now watch them make that character. <laughs> <laughs> they cast Tom Holland to play him. <laughs> uh, in the pages of All-Star Comics, Wildcat had a few adventures as a member of the Justice Society of America. In the 1980s, whenever the All-Star Squadron was pub published, it created a retroactive continuity in which the majority of World War II mystery men interacted with each other. Wildcat had a place as a member in the conglomeration of heroes as well. In the 1970s run of All-Star uh, All -Star Comics, his Wildcat played a central role as a JSA member. In the story arc, when uh, which saw Green Lantern go berserk, the Commissioner Bruce Wayne <laughs> and Commissioner Bruce Wayne uh, issued an arrest... Yes. Issued arrest warrants for the JSA. It was Wildcat's ability to look fear in the face that allowed him to defeat the real mastermind of the disaster, the second Psycho Pirate. Psycho Pirate. You know what's wild about Psycho Pirate? What's that? He's, in the, he's like one of the main uh, characters portrayed in the new uh, Justice League Infinity Crisis movie, part two. Really? Yeah, I was watching it last night on Max. <laughs> Psycho watched, Pirate? Yeah, part one, and then Psycho Pirate's like the main, like, uh, Driving force of part two. Oh, really? It's time for part three. <laughs> Whenever it drops on Max. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not paying 20 bucks for that shit on Amazon Prime. <laughs> In 1985, during the crisis on Infinite Earths, Ted's legs were shattered by an out of control red fell out of He's got a lot of his kneecaps and he broke most of them. Watch out of a wheelchair. Ah, ah. <laughs> Cause when you were talking about that, it's like, oh, that happened. <laughs> Everyone's breaking their fucking knees. <laughs> Uh, and he was told that he'd never walk again. He soon discovered that his granddaughter, Yolanda Monta uh, Montez, had recently become the second Wildcat, though. Wildcat. Mm -hmm. Back on Earth-1, uh, an Earth-1 version of Ted Grant existed pre-crisis and teamed up with Batman, himself a retired world he heavyweight champion, like his Earth-2 counterpart, on five occasions. This version of Ted had a relatively minor career, and his origin and early years were not chronicled. This version of Ted also ceased to exist following the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths, with the Earth 2 version becoming the dominant version of the new unified universe. Christ, imagine fucking Mike Tyson breaking into the fucking drug house, right? Yeah. And just fucking wailing on people. That's kind of what Ted I'm here to stop crime. <laughs> stop crime. And he just, the one guy's like, are you Mike Tyson? And he's like this big goofy mask on, and he just getting fucking socked in the face. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> and that would just be like because they, they never really like talk about that in terms of like a realistic portrayal. Yeah. But like a guy dressed up like in a in a suit like a Batman suit, right, with the punching power of heavyweight boxer. He'd be like God, <laughs> just gave him fucking skulls in. And they have the, all, everybody's ears are bitten. Yeah, like he's just fucking. Like, they, they, you see Batman doing the fucking Dempsey roll, huh? huh. <laughs> like, oh my god. Are you? Are, like, are you like Tyson? <laughs> You'll, ne your you'll, you'll never remember. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Like, imagine, like, he went up to, like, a regular Bane, right? Yeah. And Bane's, like, a powerful military, like, level guy, right? Yes. But, like, professional, like, fighters are, like, above be like a a above military in terms of, like, combat ability. Like, a uh, combat power, anyway. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like, they have, like, the lethal stuff, right? But, like, if it was, like, a one-on-one, -on -one, no, no weapons, no nothing, it was just a fist fight. Like imagine like Bane like coming out of that Mike Tyson five foot ten fucking rocks his shit off bum bum and Bane's like oh fuck. and he just like he does the fucking wobbly legs. <laughs> you know what the best portrayal of that is was a, a a short with Green Arrow, where he was in an airport trying to save this princess, this little girl. Yeah. And he has a he has a fight with one of the henchmen, and they have like a realistic looking fight where like they're having like a boxing match, and like, the henchman does this little weird feint. And then he somehow gets underneath uh, Green Arrow's like uh, um, guard, and he punches him like square in the fucking nose and rocks the shit. Like boom! I'm like, oh shit! He kind well, of remember the saying that uh, I can't remember what uh, comic book it was in, but Batman where he's like, it isn't gonna be somebody like Joker or somebody like that that kills him. It's gonna be <laughs> of like people like Bane or Joker or you know like Riddler. None of them. It's like no, it's that one little henchman, that little cocky son of a bitch. That I got him. Him. 
which they made fun of, uh, or not made fun of, but they actually portrayed in Batman the Animated Series, where it's the day Batman died. Mm-hmm. Where Joker, he, he he puts all the villains in like a courtroom and stuff like that. Where he's like, who killed Batman? <laughs> it's his job to kill Batman. Uh, I'll have to find that video and show it to you later, though. All right. Uh, after the crisis, the injuries that Ted had sustained were downgraded from paraplegia to ex- the time to displace Hippolyta. Got so he got it in. Yeah. <laughs> Although Batman got the first one. <laughs> Uh, Twice during the post-zero hour uh, retirement, Ted was severely injured, defending innocent lives. He received the first injury defending patrons of the Bar Warriors, run uh, run by the ex-Green Lantern Guy Gardner. Later, he was injured in a rescue operation during a planet-wide snowfall. On both occasions, he was treated on-site by warriors and miraculously recovered from his injuries. It was later revealed that Ted possesses nine lives. The result of the magician Zatara altering a curse placed upon him by a sorcerer named King Inferno after Ted refused to throw a boxing match for the wizard. <laughs> wow, so this was like, you know what, fuck you. Here's a curse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Zatara changed it. So Zatanna's dad. Like, what was the curse? Because I just gave him nine lives. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, uh, uh, it was intended to transform him, uh, him into an actual cat. Jeez. But instead gave him nigh immortality, meaning that he can only die if he is killed nine times in rapid succession. So fucking impossible, unless you throw it a fucking volcano. Yeah. Like that, dead, dead, dead. dead, dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or nine uh, well-placed bullets. <laughs> you got dead shot up there, just... Oh, Manny, man. <laughs> Wish death the bomb me. <laughs> That would be hard to kill a motherfucker nine times in a row. Yeah. Unless you were consecutive rapid succession. Yeah. You have to like, yeah, like everything would have to be like an instant kill. Yeah. And like fast too. The fucking Omega beams or some shit. That's probably one of the only things that could actually kill him. Or just continuous laser from Superman. Or he just fucking throws him into space. Bitch, huh? (laughs) Dead, 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 dead. (laughs) Just floating in space. (laughs) And then don't die. I guess he wouldn't because he would be one death. Like once you bring him back to life. Yeah. But then he would be all bloated and <laughs> weird shit that happens to you with your dead body in space. Yeah. Uh, in the DC Universe, in the Watchmen sequel, Doomsday Clock. Watchmen. Wild... Yeah. The Watchmen sequel, Doomsday Clock. Damn. Wildcat is among the superheroes that return after Dr. Manhattan undoes his experiment on the timeline that erased the Justice Society and the Le- Legion of Superheroes. In the pages of Dark Knight's Death Metal, Wildcat was with Alan Scott, Jay Garrick, and Dr. Fate guarding the Valhalla Cemetery. On the pages of the New Golden Age, Wildcat visits Doctor Midnight during his studies of uh, his studies of Cherry Bomb. <laughs> well, these nine lives have not only kept him young, but also restored him to life if he inexplicably if he's uh, explicitly killed. He is also surprisingly strong and subtly a uh, super god. If I could even fucking read, that'd be nice, you know. <laughs> Superbly, Superbly agile, nice. So he is faster than he looks. It's always scary when a big motherfucker can run. Uh, also, whenever the ultra-humanite mind-controlled all of the heroes and villains on Earth, he was unable to control Wildcat. Wildcat! Wildcat's resistance has never been explained, other than ultra-humanite quoting Mark Twain, who said that a cat can never be made the slave of a leash. That makes perfect fucking sense, actually. <laughs> well, unruly motherfuckers. Even <laughs> he's got the brain of a yeah. cat. <laughs> Uh, whether this was another cat-like ability Wildcat gained from the magical spell, or there is another reason, was never explained or referred to ever again. What well, I mean, like, like, like small cat traits were like, let's say like they're all like standing, talking at a meeting, right? They're all talking. Yeah. And he slowly pushes the pitcher of water over then just drop it <laughs> over the edge. <laughs> and they fucked up, but it'd be funny. Like, what the fuck, Wildcat? <laughs> uh, he can also cut through metal with his claws and land to, on his feet. <laughs> If I guess from whatever height. Oh, I don't like that. I like just his fucking knuckles just cracking skulls. Well, he's got claws, too. No, that doesn't feel right. <laughs> he's a Wolverine character fucking... before Wolverine. So I just want fucking closed hands. <laughs> I feel like he's got fucking titanium fucking knuckles, too. He probably does. Fucking thick-ass fucking bony-ass knuckles. <laughs> you know that thing where like, people put out one finger like and like they have a like, kind of curved and they like... They smack it on someone's thigh and that shit hurts. Yeah. But she does that a lot to people. <laughs> that shit must fucking kill. Now, here's a list of his enemies. Okay. No, some of these are funny. Uh, Buzzard Bernay. Oh, wow. A crooked boxing manager. That's, that's one of his. That's unbelievable. 
the caveman. <laughs> okay. Is that caveman from Flintstones? Caveman. <laughs> uh, a caveman themed villain. Uh, Flint and Skinner. We already talked about them, how they fucked him up, basically. Yeah. Giles and Hogg. <laughs> Jewel thieves that posed as private detectives. Their activities led to Wildcat first meeting Stretch Skinner whenever the Jewel thieves tried to scam him. Hmm. So these are very, like, base level villains. Yeah. Which is fucking hilarious. Because they buy a cock ring of diamonds and they fucking just <laughs> swindle him. <laughs> the Headless Horseman. Uh, Damn it, I can't punch what I, there's not there. A criminal who masquerades as the Headless Horseman. Imagine him punching him in the stomach and it's his fat head's down there. <laughs> oh, you're <fracks. laughs> God, his body shots must fucking kill. Like, oh, my fucking liver. <laughs> Uh, he also appeared as different versions or alternate timelines in different, like, stories. So we have DC, the new frontier. Wildcat cameos as a world heavyweight champion, defending his title against Cassius Clay. Cassius Clay? That's fucking Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Uh, Kingdom Come, the uh, giant story that existed back then. Well, like the, uh, the, the gray-haired Superman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he was uh, basically Wildcat as a uh, humanoid black panther with the soul of Ted Grant. He is seen working with Batman's group and with other offspring of the Justice League. Uh, he is, it's not clear whether uh, or not he dies whenever the UN unleashes a nuclear attack against the metahumans at the end of the comic, though. Eesh. Yeah. Uh, we have him appearing in the Sandman slash Prez. Uh, Wildcat is portrayed as a boxer, not as a superhero in that. And then uh, Earth 2. In uh, the story Earth 2, World's End. Uh, Ted Grant appears as a, boxy, uh, a boxer living in the same uh, World Army refuge camp as Dick and Barbara Grayson during Darkseid's invasion of Earth. After Barbara's death, Ted uh, trains... <laughs> the way they write it, though. <laughs> he trains Dick. But he does. <laughs> I train that Dick. <laughs> in offensive and defensive fighting. <laughs> he had to take your dick from other dicks. <laughs> and joins him on a mission to recover his lost son. <laughs> Just the whole phrase is fucking hilarious. His dick. He trains dick. Uh, he's also appeared in live action, which is surprising. I guess he wasn't that uh, Justice uh, Society live action show or that Star Girl. Yeah, but I guess the only thing I can think of. He makes an appearance in Smallville as well. <laughs> uh, appears in Arrow uh, and Star Girl. He just fucking punches Arrow in the face. I'm leaving now. Also appeared in uh, Justice League Part Two Legends. Uh, Justice League Unlimited, voiced by uh, Dennis Farina. Here she had a voice role. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Batman: The Brave and the Bold. Yeah, he wasn't there prominently, actually. Young Justice episode Humanity. That one I don't remember. Uh, it was whenever uh, they were active back in the 1930s. So, hmm. and then uh, New Frontier. Uh, he appeared in Justice League Crisis on Two Earths. Uh, Lego DC superhero girls Brain Drain. Lego DC Superhero Girls Supervillain High. DC Superhero Girls Legends of Atlantis. Jesus, they should have gone on the girls ones. Teen Titans Go to the Movies. Oh, God. <laughs> Justice League Crisis on, Crisis on Infinite Earths. He is one of I guess he is. I mean, there's so many. You can't really. He just makes an appearance. Right. Like, you not... can't see them all in one go. You're like, God dang. Yeah. Uh, also appeared in video games uh, Batman the Brave and the Bold, the video game. DC Universe Online. And uh, Scribble Knots Unmasked, a DC Comics adventure. Hmm. Uh, obviously, he's had different merchandise and stuff like that as well. 